Hello, everyone. I'm Ron Gerber, CEO of AngelBee. So excited to bring you Valerio, who is the co-founder of Abatable. It's a fascinating company based in the UK, specializing in the world of carbon financing. I think you'll find his insights incredibly valuable. As many organizations are looking to implement sustainability in their own organizations through solar energy, recycling, EV charging, all great initiatives. The issue comes up is they can only do so much internally. They also have capital available. And what Abatable does is help optimize and accelerate the flow of capital to other organizations who need this capital to deploy incredibly powerful net zero type of projects. And then by offering this capital through the Abatable platform, the company benefits not only as part of its goals and net zero commitments, what it's doing through its internal activities, it benefits by outlaying its capital to other organizations that reap the benefits. That's a high level view. I hope it's reasonably accurate. I'm now gonna turn it over to Valerio to give you more details into the history of Abatable, its incredibly powerful research group, how it goes about identifying technology, sourcing projects, facilitating this flow of capital, and then I'm going to ask him to share some examples of how they're accelerating sustainability initiatives, net zero goals on a global basis, and helping so many organizations. Hopefully, you'll be one of them after hearing his comments. All yours now. Thank you so much, Ron, and a ple true pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting us. So yeah, you, I think you give an incredible description of what we do and, and the problem we're trying to solve. Um, the way we define Abatable is a carbon procurement platform. So what we do is we help corporates and organizations and investors channel capital towards impactful and high integrity carbon projects that can have the impact of reducing emissions in the, from the atmosphere or removing them altogether. Um, we started Abatable, um, so my co-founder and I have been friends for over 12 years. Uh, we've traveled the world together. We've been to a lot of countries that has started to see a lot of these negative effects of the uh, warming environment and warming climate. Um, and she actually had already started dedicating her career to that. So she, in a previous, before Abatable, she was an impact investor. So she was identifying promising climate tech solutions and, and companies to, to invest in uh, and help companies as well invest in some of these technologies and solutions. While I've dedicated myself to sort of exploring how can tech be used for, for good causes. And um, so worked at Google on uh, artificial intelligence applied to healthcare and Facebook working on COVID and vaccine misinformation. And we started Debatable about a year ago and really our goal was to start building trust in what we saw a market at its nascent uh, and, and it's an infancy truly uh, and so starting to help more organization interfacing with the market in an effective way in an impact driven way with the right data and the backing of science wow so it's very powerful now you also have a substantial research group so if i'm a corporate entity with capital i want to deploy there's so many different technology options, so many geographies out there. It can be challenging to figure out what project to use. Maybe you could describe a little bit the efforts you put in place within Abatable to help a corporate provider of capital have greater confidence in some of the projects that might be available through the Abatable platform. Yeah, you're absolutely right. There is a plethora of solutions, what we call negative emission solutions. And so these are projects that are run locally in specific regions or countries around the world. Uh, they are looking to avoid emissions or actually permanently sequester carbon from the atmosphere. Um, and you know, just to name a few, you could be protecting a forest from, from deforestation. Uh, you could be uh, sinking kelp into the bottom of the ocean to capture more carbon, or you could be building machines that literally suck the CO2 out of the atmosphere and store it permanently. Um, and so the question then becomes, it's like, okay, if there's all these solutions available to us, like how do we choose the, the one that we should be investing in, right? And the fact that, you know, you can be protecting a forest doesn't necessarily mean you're doing it right. So what, is it, what does right mean? What does the right look? So what we do as a starting point is we take uh, every single methodology, every single type of negative emission project, and we go really deep on that. So we do spend a lot of time doing research on 
okay, what is the forest conservation? Why is it started? Uh, what makes it a good project? What are the risks involved in this project? And what are the um, sort of aspects that we need to look out for so that we know that this project is actually high integrity. It's actually delivering on the climatic impact that it says and it's claiming they have. And so when we do that, we define sort of what the category leaders in terms of organizations that are running these projects. And we look to partner with them and put them in front of the corporates and companies and organizations and investors that we work with. So the good thing is Abatable isn't simply a or an online platform to match providers of capital with sustainability project owners who need that capital. It's also a very valuable source of what I would call due diligence because it's not simply matching buyers and sellers and good luck. It's like we'll match buyers and sellers, so to speak, but we'll also bring you our insights and giving you greater confidence that the projects that we vet that are allowed to be on the abatable platform. I'm sure the ones we can see, you see many more that probably are too risky that you don't wanna put on the platform. And I would imagine in doing so, it builds a great deal of trust and credibility in the corporate providers of capital, knowing that it, for lack of a better term, has the abatable seal of approval, gives them much more confidence that they can deploy their capital here in a cost and reliable fashion. That's absolutely right. And I think the way to, to, to think about it is that uh, ultimately what these organizations are doing is a, is a stopgap solution, right? So the end goal should be to decarbonize our industries as much as possible, is to create new technologies for producing all sorts of materials, for transporting things, uh, for moving people and, and, and that, that you know are carbon neutral truly right they have a net impact zero impact on the environment um and so investing in some of these projects as a way to compensate from some of their emissions is a stopgap solution in a lot of ways and so a lot of these companies tend to be under substantial scrutiny when they do that right and so they want to ensure that they're doing it in a very impact driven way with high integrity and so there's been a lot of instances and, you know, it's you're not going to go, you don't have to scroll very far down Google searches if you search for carbon offsets and you find a lot of bad uh, stories, a lot of, you know, Bloomberg articles, exposés that sort of show how some companies have supported projects and invested in projects that turn out to have either false claims about sort of the climatic impact or just uh, sort of inflated claims. And so a lot of companies are afraid of what's now been uh, termed uh, greenwashing. And so for us, what's really important is providing the tools and the diligence and the expertise so that they can more confidence transact in this voluntary carbon market. Yeah. And so, you know, that's ultimately the, the goal of what we're trying to do. That's great. Maybe you could share some specific examples of what the project was without even, because uh, I'm sure there's some NDAs and whatnot, you know, at least describe, you know, the type of organization that provided the capital, the type of organization that put in place the project, the successes. And I imagine, as you, as you said, you've worked at Google, you've worked at Facebook, you're probably going to see in sustainability and, and the carbon finance world, I'll call it the abatable effect, because hopefully, and we'll bring you on, we'll do another follow-up talk in a year or two, You know, <laughs> as more and more organizations have success getting the capital they need to make the planet better, as more corporate providers or capital start seeing the benefits, they talk to each other, they talk at angel beat events, they talk in blog posts, and it just builds on each other because more and more organizations put their projects on your platform, more and more corporate sustainability executives say, hey, you better sign up for sustainable, or excuse me, for abatable for your sustainability project. So give us some good examples. Yeah, so I, I think we spend a lot of time uh, getting uh, our understanding right for forest conservation. Forest conservation is incredibly important, right? We could be talking a lot about tree planting and why that's sort of an interesting solution, an interesting idea in the sense of creating new carbon capture capacity in, in our natural ecosystem. But truly, the most important uh, sort of forests around the world that are currently capturing a lot of CO2 on a steady base, on a yearly base, uh, are endangered. They're, there's rampant uh, deforestation. Sometimes it's sort of human caused. Uh, sometimes it's caused by wildfires or just the effects of climate change. And so 
there is a lot of work that we need to do firstly to start protecting those forests, right? But what does good look there? And I think that's what we wanted to get right. What are the good forest conservation projects? What are the characteristics of it? And so we've identified a few projects, uh, some in Latin America, some in Indonesia, some in Africa, that we believe are doing truly great work. And some of the key components there are, firstly, how credible is the threat to the forest that you're looking to protect, right? If you're protecting a forest that virtually has no danger of deforestation, then there's no need for the carbon financing. You shouldn't have started that project in the first place. That's what we call additionality in the industry. So that's the first important check. But there's other things that are more sort of nuanced, I would say. And, and if you look at some of the, in developing countries, the reason for deforestation, one of the most common ones is logging activities by sort of local and rural communities, right? They need to expand, they need to build houses, they need to sort of uh, power their cook stoves. Um, and so if you're looking then to protect the forest and those communities cannot benefit from the logging activities and are, are losing a revenue source, and so therefore need to go to another forest and sort of <laughs> create deforestation there, then the net impact is zero. So it's a very nuanced and difficult uh, approach to understand how involved are the communities in this project? Are they getting a benefit themselves? Uh, how well is the project protecting the biodiversity of the ecosystem where the forest is in, right? And talking about endangered species, both from plant perspective, but also animal perspective. And so all of these considerations went into place for us to understand, okay, these projects are truly doing great work. Uh, and so we want to put it forward. And so we've helped some investors um, that we work with starting uh, generating capital uh, upfront for some of these projects so that these projects could continue going on for a number of years, could expand potentially so the area uh, that was protected became bigger uh, or launch in a sort of nearby forest, perhaps a second project thanks to that capital provided. Wow, so that's very powerful because you need to have an understanding of the global capital markets, but you also need that insights, the so-called feet on the street. I, I don't know what the appropriate description is for feet mm -hmm. on the forest floor, whatever it might be. But that's really, yeah. I would imagine, one of the key strengths of Abatable, why it's got such great success. Are you looking at setting up more operations in the U.S. or other countries? Maybe you could share a little bit about your future plans. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's uh, that's been one of the biggest frustrations. We we started during COVID, right, during the global pandemic, and so we couldn't spend as much time as we wanted to actually visiting these projects on the ground. But now that most restrictions have been lifted and it's safe enough for our employees to travel, we're actually going to be starting to visit a lot of the sort of organizations that we partner with. But ultimately, without us actually looking at the projects and experiencing it on a daily basis, which becomes a bit harder, um, the important aspect and how we do risk some of these investments is not just looking at how well the project is uh, sort of delivering on its carbon impact, but how well is the organization that is running the project? How well, how well capitalized are they? How well organized are they? Um, do they have any sort of previous litigations that we should be aware of? Are they, are they using enough technical experts and independent experts to validate a lot of their assumptions and, and the work they do? Uh, do they have teams that are delegated to uh, engaging with the communities on the ground? So like all of these things are things that we do diligence as part of our initial uh, sort of uh, outreach to these uh, project developers. That's what we call them. Um, and so it's part of a sort of part of our broader due diligence process and how we guarantee the quality of what we work with. I would think that's very powerful. You know, for those individuals who are looking to raise capital, listening to this, you go to Abatable. Uh, dot com, correct? And yep. you can see all of the information there. Go to angelbeat.com, whatever, hashtag angelbeat, hashtag available, and we'll put you in touch. But if you're looking to raise capital, we encourage everyone to take full advantage of this platform um, because we know that's critically important, as you said, especially with projects around deforestation in the Amazon and elsewhere. People down there may not have easy access to the capital they need and going through the abatable online platform is a very cost, time, technology efficient way for you to access that capital. And similarly, if you're a corporate provider of capital and you're looking at, well, here's all the things that I can realistically assume when we go to solar, when we put in place batteries, when we put in place EV charging, more LED efficient lighting, you can only get so far. And 
you should also look at, I would imagine if you're a corporate ESG executive, you need to make sure that you set up your account on a beta ball, be constantly monitored to the unit projects there, because this is a key part of your, and this is, I think, one of the key insights that I gleaned, if you're an ESG sustainability executive sort of anywhere in the world, you have to actively look at all the various solutions out there to implement this, but do not overlook the benefits that you can gain from deploying your capital. Most people in corporate environments may not be green tech investors as a rule of thumb, but you have lots of experience in knowing what works in your own operations. And you could have, a, I would imagine, a much higher degree of confidence in knowing that the Abatable team has the due diligence expertise as well as a credible platform that should give you greater confidence in using capital to also achieve your net zero goals beyond just putting solar panels on your roof. I, I, I love that. Thank you, Ron. And I, I think just uh, the only thing I can add to that is uh, there is a sense of urgency uh, that sometimes gets underestimated. And I think the more we delay climate action, the harder it will be for us to come back from it. Um, it's, it's, it's sort of it's a snowball effect. It's not that, you know, next year it's going to be fine. We can do it next year or in two years down the line. Things get progressively worse and marginally then the investments that we need to make to reverse the effects of climate change are going to be harder and more costly for us. And so this is the time to invest in climate. This is the time to start sort of deploying capital, if available, to support some of these projects. And I think there's a there's an element as well of a lot of these projects are located in, in regions that will be far more affected by the adverse effects of climate change than perhaps you and I will be, right? The, you, you, perhaps New York slightly less, um, <laughs> but uh, certainly London. Um, and so you know, that's uh, generally an additional component of something to think about is just sort of you're contributing to perhaps like more mitigation potential for in for regions that will be dramatically affected by climate change. It's interesting because when you look at maps of the world, even when they take uh, shots from the space shuttle or the International Space Station and they compare images today versus 10 or 20 years ago, and they use various sensing to determine heat or CO2 emissions, you can visibly see the changes when you compare before and after. I mean, you see it here in the United States. There are several lakes, especially in the western part of the United States, yeah. uh, Lake Powell, Lake Mead, where you can visually see the water receding, and it's dramatic. It, it's very scary. Uh, but on a positive note, we were talking with the uh, chief of sustainability for the city of L.A., and it, it's amazing all these little things are so impactful. They had, instead of painting all of the roads black, we all know black absorbs lots of heat. What the city of LA, you know, there's lots of highways and roads in, mm -hmm. in yeah, California. Much like, so what they did, they found a new substance that was reflective of right. heat. And now you'll see not black tops, but gray tops on many of the roads in LA. And literally, when I was talking with um, uh, Gary Spouts, who's their chief sustainability officer, you could look at pictures from outer space and you could see the heat in Los Angeles is less now than it was two years ago. So lots of amazing things going out there. So exciting for me to hear about the innovative solutions going on debatable. Look forward now with COVID at least being manageable, that hopefully you'll be able to uh, expand your U.S. operations. Look forward to meeting you in person. And thanks again for all the great things you're doing. Thank you, Ron. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Great.